This story is something that I think about from time to time and it creeps me out. So I'm writing this to get it off my chest. So anyways, let's begin. Almost three years ago, I was 17 at this point and was accustomed to being in horrible situations. As all I had was my mother and she did not hold down a job for long because she had her own issues to tackle. And so as I grew up, we stayed in and out of roommates' houses. We never really had our own place to stay except twice, but that didn't last long either. And we would be forced into a new environment with a snap of a finger. So when I was 17, we were led into a situation where we were going to be homeless again. And I was so used to it at this point as I had slept in the street more than I had like. The day comes when we have to leave our roommate's house and my mom is able to stay at her boyfriend's trailer. I had nowhere to go as I had no friends at this point, as I had halted my friendships because they were bad for my health and my mental state and were overall just toxic. My mom offered me to go with her, but I didn't want to, as I felt like getting between my mom and her boyfriend was kind of weird. Plus, I'm used to the street, and I didn't think it was that bad at that time. So, here we are, and I get dropped off at a McDonald's, and I eat some burgers before I go off into the streets once more. Eventually, the sun fled and darkness was all that remained, and so, I looked for a place to sleep for the night. I went into many places that night trying to sleep but none of them were working because it was either too hot or the lights were too bright or the mosquitoes were biting me. That's when I remember a house that I used to go into to chill in. This house was under construction and nearly finished so the doors all shut and the windows were all settled so there were no mosquitoes. I go through the back like I always do and I make my way upstairs. Eventually, I settle in the bathroom because there is less debris on the floor. So I lay there and I try to sleep. Eventually, I hear some sounds downstairs, but I didn't think anything of it. I figured it was the door that I came through swinging open and close or something. Eventually, after laying there for maybe an hour, I open up my phone and look at old photos of my life thinking about how I messed it up and that how I got to this point and how I had lost everything. The noises were still happening this entire time but I paid no mind to it. Eventually, for whatever reason, I get up and I go to sit down on the back porch because I couldn't get to sleep. I make my way downstairs and out the back door to the porch. I'm messing around on my phone for maybe five minutes when it happens. I see movement to my left from the back door that I just exited from. I glance over and time itself freezes. At first I think that it's an illusion but I was in fact wrong. I see a man shrouded in darkness peering past the wall inside to gaze at me. His lower half of his figure was behind the wall entirely and I could not see anything but his upper body. The rest of his body is leaning to the left, peeking behind this wall, almost like the man was trying not to let me see his full body, as it would make his presence known. The man was a pure black silhouette and I could not make out any features. After noticing him, I just sat there and stared at him for what seemed like forever, but it was probably a minute or two. I expected him to come outside and talk to me because I normally talk to a lot of homeless people and I thought that the man was just homeless. He didn't come outside though, he had not moved at all actually. He was as still as a statue and quiet as a mouse. Maybe if I had not noticed him he would have stared at me the entire time. Eventually after staring at him I got up and got on my bicycle and made my way out of the property. As I'm walking out of the backyard, I peer into the window that is next to the door that I saw the man in. The moonlight revealed the man was still there, only now he was watching me walk off the property. I could tell because the moonlight revealed the top of the man's head, and I saw his left eye gazing at me. He was a white male who was very tall and had a jacket of some kind on. 
I couldn't make out many details because he was still cloaked in darkness. After seeing this, I just moved a little faster out of there. I got to the front of the house on the street and I looked inside to see if I could see him again, but I couldn't. I got on my bicycle and I waved goodbye to the house because I figured the man was still watching me. And then I drove away. For the rest of the night, I could not sleep. I tried two different spots, but both were no luck. This is where the story ends. I know I didn't have a crazy chase or fight to the death or anything, but this was real life and it's not the same as the movies or books. I don't know what the man was doing in there. I assume he was trying to sleep like I was, but the way that he was staring at me was very unnerving. It makes me wonder how long the man was in the house for and what would have happened if I had actually fallen asleep. Would he have stared at me while I was asleep completely blinded to his presence? Or did he have other intentions? I will never know, but now I don't go into houses like that anymore at all after this experience. This happened around 2018, right after my sister moved out of our apartment together. It's been bothering me since I just moved out. I was home alone on my day off when somebody knocked on my door. No one ever visits and I have anxiety so that was terrifying to me already. I answered and it was a woman who lived in one of the basement apartments. She seemed nice at first, asking if I wanted any clothes that she was giving away because they weren't her style, but supposedly matched mine perfectly as a young woman. That was already a red flag in my mind because the only time that I ever saw her was when I was walking to work, wearing my uniform of a black shirt, black pants, and a black hat. But I let her talk because I'm super awkward and I hated being rude to technical strangers. But then she started getting pushy and listing off super expensive name brands to try to get me to go to her apartment. It's an old small building with no cameras and I live on the top floor, which would be down what I call the creepy stairs and next to the door to the back lot that nobody ever used. And then I realized she was holding a notebook open with a script of what to say. I continued to reject but my anxiety wouldn't let me close the door on her face without fear of her lashing out. She kept insisting until I finally told her that my boyfriend was going to be home soon and suggested that she donated them. My boyfriend wasn't going to be home for many, many hours, but she didn't need to know that, obviously. So she leaves and I go back to my room, which has a window facing that back lot slash alleyway. A few moments later, I hear a fight happening in the lot and I see her with the previous. He was already fired at that point. Maintenance man. It's a loud, a screaming fight, and they're standing next to his truck, which has tinted windows and a covered truck bed. My paranoia went a little wild, so I texted my family about it just to feel a bit safer. And then I believe that he left. But a little while later, something hit my door pretty hard. I didn't check, just stared. And then it happened again and again, all night until my boyfriend came home, and for a few days when I was alone. I found out after looking at the door that they were hitting my deadbolt and it was off center. Even after it was replaced, the damage could not be fixed. It stopped after a little while and the woman moved out almost immediately after all that. I don't want to feed my paranoia, but something obviously was not right. I know that I should have called the police, but I have horrific phone anxiety too. Everybody thought that I was overreacting, and police in my town are relatively useless. Also, that maintenance man was rehired and was the one who replaced my deadbolt, insisting he kept the extra key despite never needing the old one. My new house is much safer, thankfully. It 
Today, on the 14th of September, 2023, I saw the thing that scared me the most as a kid. Nobody knew who he was and where he came from. I was the only one to realize who he was. When I was five, I lived in a small town in between two major cities. It was a simple town, but a nice one. A big park, a small mall with all the basic shops and a small primary school. I used to go to that school until the third grade. The event of this story takes place two years before that. When I got into the first grade, my parents decided to call my best friend's mother. The goal of the call was for me and my friend, let's call her A, to walk together to school since we both live close to the school, less than a kilometer. Keep in mind that we were both five years old. We first did walk the path with our parents for the first week. Everything went smooth and we both loved walking with our parents and having fun. The first months of me and A walking to school went smoothly. We both waited for one another at the local golf club's parking lot and walked to school. Fast forward to February. That morning I went outside in my puffy snowsuit and waited at the parking lot like I usually did. I waited 5 minutes and then 10 and then 15 minutes. I noticed that she wasn't coming from down the road. My parents didn't warn me about that, did they? I decided to still go on my merry way. And oh boy was I wrong to do that. I should have come back home to tell my mom or something. As I walked down the road, I passed a house that always made me feel uncomfortable. It was a big house three stories high and made of a dark brown brick and the windows were blocked with bed sheets. The parking lot was filled with trash and old toys that were discolored by the sun. As I walked past it, I heard a door open. Soon after, I heard a man call to me. Hey, come over here. He said in a weird, kid-friendly voice. I turned around to see who it was and it was this weird tall man with long and slick ginger hair. He had a metalhead haircut and he was wearing a black hoodie with some disgusting jeans and nothing more but crocs on his feet. I have something to show you bud. Come inside, I have something for you. He said with a smile on his face. I never personally experienced something like this but I remembered my dad telling me if anyone you don't know asks you to follow them in their car or inside their house, do not follow them. So as I heard what that man said, I started running as fast as I could. When I turned to the street corner, something had grabbed a hold of me though. He grabbed me. He was holding onto my shoulder and he turned me around to face him. The smell of his hair was horrible, a mix between rotten eggs and cigarettes. I looked at him for a split second before deciding to make another run for it. I was able to get free and I arrived at the crossroad next to my school, and I ran straight for the school crossing guard. I explained what had happened and she took me to the school with her. When I was finally in the building, I told my teacher right away. My teacher was in utter shock to hear that and went into the principal's office to get somebody to come and get me. The school specialized education teacher took me to the staff meeting room afterwards to speak about the situation. My parents were called, but my dad was not able to come to school. My mom, on the other end, came as quickly as she could. When my mom arrived, I bursted into tears and hugged her because I was scared of being kidnapped. The whole situation was explained to my mom and two police officers were called to the school because... My mom wanted to press charges against the man. When the officers had asked about the description, they had stopped and one said, Oh yeah, we know who that is. We call him Elmo. My mom took a second and looked really confused. As a kid, the only thing that was close to Elmo was that red little monster thing and I remember being confused as well. My mom then spoke. Who the heck is this Elmo, and why would he grab my son like that? 
The teacher tried to talk, but the officer started arguing and the room was filled with loud voices of both my mom and the officers. After they were done, the teacher said something that still makes me mad to this day. Listen, officers, he didn't mean to lie to you. She was talking about me. It's all just a big misunderstanding. Children these days have a tendency to lie a lot. The teacher looked at me and told me, Go ahead and tell the officers that it was all a made-up story, that you simply imagined things because you were alone and scared. She was looking at me with knives instead of eyes. Of course, I tried to defend myself, but she didn't want to hear what I had to say. In the end, I was pressured into lying about my lie. The officers gave me a warning and a good old verbal beating. My mom knew that I wasn't lying and took the matter into her own hands. That day I went home in the morning and my mom decided to make me skip a whole week of school to think about what I did. Now fast forward 15 years. I now work as a cook in a pub. Today was a good day as usual. I greeted the clients like I normally did and kept working in the kitchen. At some point during the day, my colleague said, Dang, look at that guy's hair. That stuff is crazy long. So, out of curiosity, I peeked through the door frame, but I couldn't really see anything. I went behind the counter and it hit me like a truck in the chest. It was him. To confirm my theory, I took off my apron to serve him and take care of his order. At some point during the time, he had asked to open up a tab and to get a beer. I asked him what was the name for the tab and he said, Oh, just call me Elmo. That's what all my friends call me. I backed up and went into the office to catch my breath. I honestly felt like I was going to be sick. I sat down on my laptop in the office and I looked up. Elmo police reports and in the city that I'm located in. I found something that made me sick. This guy was a registered SO and a CR, and he was incarcerated from 2009 to 2022. That meant that he just came out of jail and he walked freely. I felt like my heart was going to explode. I left work and told my trainee to fill in for me. When I got home, I called my mom and I told her everything. She then told me something that I never knew. The reason why I skipped an entire week of school. She told me that when we got back home, she contacted my uncle who was in the police with the canine units. He went to Elmo's house with three of his buddies and two canine units to search the place. The house was filled with pictures and paintings of horrible things. In the end, they pretty much caught him red-handed, and he was sent to jail. It's ironic. But now, he walks freely and he came into my pub. As for now though, I'm home and safe. I don't know what to do if he comes in again, but one thing is for sure. I won't be sleeping tonight. Peace out, everyone. It isn't very creepy, but more scary, and I didn't know who to share it with. I was driving down a two-lane street with my windows open late at night. A car pulled up next to me in the other lane full of men. They started catcalling me through the windows. Naturally, I ignored them and started to slow down. Suddenly, the guy in the passenger seat hurled a large concrete block right at me. If I wasn't watching, it would have gone right through my open window and into me. But instead, it went under my car, missed my tire, and took out two cars behind me. They both lost a tire. The concrete block had to be 20 to 30 pounds, and it had metal rods sticking out of it. it scared the heck out of me. My fiancé keeps saying that if I was a man, they still would have done it. But they wouldn't have slowed down to catcall me at all if I was a man. 
Why do men do this?